so ladies and gentlemen season two is coming to an end we have literally only got a matter of four days tuesday next week being the 28th of this month when we get the new season season two i'm super excited with all the information that has come out however in this video i'm going to be showing you my favorite builds in this game that i'm still using well one that i'm not but apparently based on the death squad discord if you're not in the discord discord discord.gg forward slash death squad the ears are free then um you don't know there's this one guy called pug and pug sent me a brigantine build which apparently is the best now the reason i'm showing you these builds i do know we're moving into a new season we're going to have loads more builds but when the season first starts we're not going to know what builds are the best and these builds should be able to carry you through until we get any better builds so let's start so the first ship we're going to start off with is the Sandbook. Now, guys, I'm not actually going to be using these, showing you how they work. I'm literally just going to show you the builds. Otherwise, this video is going to be extremely long. So I'm just going to show you the ship and what they are. So the first one is the Sandbook. And as we do know all the Sandbook, the reason we use this is because of the Scorch Talent. Deals 5,000 burning damage when you apply the Ablaze effect to an enemy ship. Ablaze will be applied to enemies in a radius of 150 meters. Increased damage to ships with Ablaze effect by 50%. Now we can see there all of the standard bits that we got on it. But if I go over it, if I go to Manage Ship, and I go to weapons. This is the one I use most. Now, the reason I use uh, the Zam Zama Freeze on the front is because, if you didn't know, the front of this ship actually has six gun ports. It has the two top, top deck and it has uh, three... Oh, sorry. Wait. Does it have two each side lower deck? Yes, it does. It has two each side lower deck. So it has six total, three each side at the front. So that makes it six weapons at the front and it's pretty OP. It's better than, for instance, putting a fire bombard free on the front because if you put that on the front, you're only going to get the use of two. Plus, um, having the Zamzama freeze, it has a Raider perk, which increases charge rate of vulnerable effects by 50%. So you get a little bit more crew damage by having that as well. Then for the sides, I've got the fire bombards freeze. It's got explosive and it's got burning one. For the side, uh, the other side as well, and then for the rear, I'm also using the Fire Bombard Free. Now you could put the Zamzama Freeze here at the back as well because it's got four, but I still think the Fire Bombard Freeze are better than the Zamzama Freeze at the rear. For the auxiliary, I'm using the Rocket Freeze. The Rocket Freeze reason is because it's got the Burning Twos. Now I do understand a lot of you do struggle with this, so you could go ahead and put the Leopold Free on, but I do think if you put the Leopold Free on, it's wasted because you want to be getting that blaze. And with this having the Burning Two, I would suggest just trying to learn a little bit more on how to use the rockets um, and you could really put the termites on but you, you only get them burning one but the good thing about this is you could take down turrets a little bit more and apparently it does a little bit more damage because it's got the piercing on it so that's completely up to you i just use the rocket freeze and um, because i want to be able to burn people a lot quicker and get that blaze effect even quicker now for the armor i do use the black prince now it's got explosive protection 35 percent it's got piercing protection 20% and fire protection 18%. But the main reason is because the perk resolute reduces damage taken by 50% when the whole health, whole health is less than 33%. So in effect, when you're low armor or low health, you are you basically getting loads more armor, which does really help out, especially if uh, this, this is coming down to the wire. For the furniture, the first one I'm using is the volatile fuel. It increases charge rate of a blaze effect on enemy ships by 10%. For the major furniture, you're going to be surprised. Um, and I'm actually using reduced damage taken by 15% and increases threat generation by 100% while anchored. Um, so the reason I'm using this is a bit weird. I could switch it up and I could do, for instance, the scrapper station restores uh, 8,000 whole health after a crew attack. But I've only really got my front cannons that are going to be generating my crew attack. Um, so it's not going to come up that quick. And I could use other things like munitions mixer increases, flooding, and a blaze effect to enemy ships by 100%, uh, but reduces damage dealt by 30%. And I don't want that because the, the blaze works on every time you proc it, it does 5,000 damage. If I leave it activated for so long, then I'm going to be missing out on that. Now, the reason I use the iron capstan is because every time I get shot at by an enemy ship, I can literally, you can see how long this takes to anchor. It is so flipping quick. If I'm getting the alert to say that they're about to fire their guns, which you'll see on the side of the screen, they're firing. So I'm at full sprint right now, okay? So we can see that I'm at full sprint. If I literally just tap B a couple of times, I'm anchored. Now being anchored, literally that, that anchor sign comes up so quick. Look, anchored. And that's an extra 15% armor just by doing that. 
So every time they shoot, if I literally just hit the anchor button, because the sandbook doesn't move that fast anyway, I'm getting an extra 15% armor on top of the 33% that I'm getting from the Black Prince, and I'm just getting an extra 15% overall. So where the ship lacks on having all of the armor, because it's only got 35,000 hull health and 7,000 brace strength, it's actually getting 15% more just by having that on. Now, that's completely up to you. What would you put on it? Let me know in the comments down below, but that's what I use for... Slot number three, I've got the Demi Cannon Works. One increases elemental damage multiplayer of the Demi Cannons by 90%. For furniture slot four, I've got the Gunpowder Bench. One increases damage to enemy ships with the Ablaze effect by 10%. And then for number five, I've got increased elemental damage multiplier of Bombards by 90%. This is actually my main go-to uh, build for everything, especially doing the takeovers at the minute. So I don't have many left. I've literally only got about i only need to do two more to get two more territories because i've actually done the manufactories in terms of 70 but i need to get two more territories so i need to hopefully that to proc that to proc or that to proc um and ideally not this one if, if i can get two of the out of these three to proc uh, then i've done mine and if you haven't done it guys make sure you do that before the end of the season if you don't know what i'm talking about uh, you get upgrade parts and you get helm leases by getting what you see at the top of the screen um if you get 70 manufactories which is the little warehouse looking thing uh, you can get 75 upgrade parts, maybe it's more, um, um, something like that. And then uh, for the territories having 16, you get six helm leases. So it's definitely worth doing with the remaining days of the season. Obviously, we can see there's four. Definitely do it. I might have said this before, but yeah, just please do that. Uh, that will give you a he massive head start. Right, let's go on to the next ship. So the next ship I'm going to do is going to be, I'm going to show Pug's build. Now, I actually haven't really put this through its testing, but everyone in the server, does, we've got a PvP server fill in ours where everyone joins in together and does pvp and apparently he absolutely dominates everyone with this build so let's show you the build so to start off with um oh i need to go and put the leopold 3 on here we are using the brigantine so if you don't know what the brigantine is or what it does it's a dps ship it's got bullhorn increases damage from ramming by 45 percent reduces duration of torn sails effect by 40 percent applies flood into an enemy ship upon ramming now that you don't use that perk and th th what you mainly use this for is for the the typical lightliness of the speed and it's got a pretty decent hull health at 40,000 plus the brace strength speed and then the trim speed but it's got a lot of top deck weapons it's got four either side it's got the most top deck weapons uh currently on any ship in the game so that's the reason people use this because we're using the long nine build as we can see there so if we go into weapons we are using the skirlocks long nines all around and the reason we want to use these is mainly for the mass breakers it deals 7,000 damage after the torn sail effect is applied and the main one as well here piercing free so this weapon does have piercing free adds 30 percent of damage as piercing damage increases damage to weak points by 100 percent now We've just seen what auxiliary weapon we've got, and that's the Leopold 3. It does set off Flood in 2, and it has Blast. Uh, adds 15% of damage as explosive damage in a 50 meter Blast radius, which is pretty cool. Um, but the reason we want the Long Nines, one, we're getting the Mask Breaker. So every time we tear the sails with the four on each side and the two uh, front and back, so four more, um, you're getting that 7,000 damage. Now... You have got a piece of furniture on this called the scoping station because it's got piercing free. You're getting 100% extra weapon damage to weak spots. But with a scoping station, hitting a target from more than 320 meters away applies the mark status. Targets with the mark status take 100% more damage to weak points. So you're getting 200% extra damage to weak points as long as you're 320 meters away. The Brigantine, because it's so fast, can easily easily stay at 320 meters away but i've have skipped ahead let's go to the armors the armor that is used is a black prince yet yeah, again we've seen what it does reduce damage taken it's probably best in slot at the moment um being the black prince then we go down to furniture so yeah we have seen the scoping station and we can see that works so well with the long nines we've got the got long gun works increase elemental damage multiplier of long gun by 19 percent now this is controversial i'm using obviously pugs build here but the long gun works increases elemental damage multiplier. I'm not too sure if that's beneficial. Why? Because the Skurlock long nines actually don't have any, any elemental. It only has piercing. Would you class that as elemental? I'm not too sure. There needs to be testing done um, because I don't personally think it's classed as elemental. I think flooding and fire is elemental. But maybe they're classing tearing as it. It could be possible. But if not, then I would go ahead and switch it up. If anyone knows, then let me know. So And let us all know in the comments down below so we can go ahead and switch up. And if I was to switch up based on what everything that we've got on this ship in terms of the powder kegs and that, I would probably either go for projectile speed 
Uh, so you're hitting them a little bit faster. Or I just try and get that little bit extra armor on the ship using double, double planked hull or something like that. Um, completely up to you. But let's move down to the third slot. The third slot is the low, pot low potence schematics. Uh, one, increased damage to weak points to enemy ships by 10%. So you're getting the 200% plus 10%. 210% and reveals weak points on the fleet of pestilence but it's just to give you a bit more weak point damage you can hit 10k a shot on a weak point on a ship if you're in range it's amazing and then moving on to the last two we've got the starboard powder kegs increases starboard weapon damage by 10% and moving down we've got increased port weapon damage by 10% so we're getting the 210% plus the 10% on top of that and um, we're absolutely hitting massive we are hitting massive and he has been deleting everyone in the death squad in pvp and if you are part of the death squad and he hasn't been deleting you pvp what is your build let me know in the discord or in the comments down below so we can review it and i'll pin the best build that everyone likes the most and um, then moving down i would go over to the snow now the snow is a bit of a funky one for me because the build i use on the snow literally depends on what you're doing so if I go to manage ship, you are going to see the weapons I've got. I've got to put the orcs back on, which is the Leopold 3, because obviously I've only got one of these to switch it between the lot. Um, if I go here, I've got the Great Spring Old 3. Now, the reason I use the Great Spring Old 3, because there's only two top deck weapons on the snow. Now, I, the only other weapon I'd use of, other than the Spring Old uh, would be the Long Nines, because obviously the Mask Breaker, so every time you tear the sails, you get 7,000 damage. But I use the Great Spring Old. Um, I've only actually been using this because I've been doing a bit of PvE with this uh, build. Um, but if I was to do more PvP, then I'd probably go for the Long Nines um, just because of that 7,000 Mars Breaker. But a lot of people are going to ask, why would you choose the Spring Old 3 over the Twin Winch? Well, because the Twin Winch actually does less damage. It's got the double draw, so this weapon can be charged twice as long and increase damage range at maximum charge. Damage increased to 600%. Um, we can see the overall damage there is 5,162. We can see the overall damage here is 2,952. If you times that 2,952 by 2, it does more damage than the other one. It almost does 6,000 damage where this only does 5,162. And then you're going to go Death Wish. But how are you getting that? Because this has got double draw and it's accumulating everything that this has got. That is every two seconds that's doing 5,162. And every one second this is doing 2,952. So for every time you shoot this at max capacity twice, you're doing more damage. Plus, this has got obviously the tearing and the piercing. Whereas this does not have tearing, it only has piercing too. So it is just overall a much better weapon, this one than the twin winch ballista then going to the sides i've got the Dard dardaniels and then on the rear i've also got the dardaniels and then for the auxiliary i'm using the leopold 3 now this is completely up to you um and it depends what method you're going from this whereas so the snow is completely uh controversial and it, yet again it's it's what you decide so the reason i would say it's it's bizarre is because it can basically not be destroyed by any of the brig sail ripper builds like pugs build you basically can't destroy this but then this can't destroy them because this doesn't have enough damage output to destroy them but it definitely can take so much damage that it cannot be destroyed so it's just basically a floating tank or floating fortress on the water um, and you can rock around with that now if we want to apply more damage pvp then yes i would say remove that um, the ideal scenario is I haven't figured out a build quite yet, but the ideal scenario is to try and get a build with the carronades. And the reason we say the carronades is because it adds 50% of damage as severe damage when the target is flooded. Because it's got so much health and it lasts so long, we want to, in theory, hold our brace up. And every time we've got them flooded, we want to put severe damage on them. The reason we want to put severe damage on them because we want to make them leave the fight as soon as possible and we want to stay in the fight for as long as possible so one theory that has been thrown around it's not really been tested is putting torpedoes front and back and the reason we put the torpedoes or the rama's legacies front and back is because it's got flooding free and adds 30 percent of damage as flooding damage so season two when torpedoes lock on this might be a meta build so we want to use torpedoes front and back and then on the right and the left we want to use the carronades uh, and the reason we want to use carronades yet again is because it's severe. So once we got them flooded, we will blitz them with the carronades because it's got four lower deck gun ports and three upper deck gun ports on the side. So we've got obviously four, five, six, seven shots that we can use each time with the carrons and really apply that severe flooding damage on enemies. And then we can just hold the brace. Going to the armor, 
Now we could go ahead with this and we could use the Black Prince and Rigan Station on the snow. And then we're going to get stupid amounts of hills when we're under 20%. Um, but I would personally say the best thing for this is actually using the Ouroboros because you're going to be bracing almost indefinitely. Uh, and this has got so much bracer, guys. If you didn't know, I will quickly go over the stats of the ship. It's got tenacity. It's a tank. Recovers brace strength by 4% per second while bracing. Increases brace strength by 50%. Uh, and brace strength recovery by 150%. We can see this has got a whole health of... It's actually got 50,000 and 25,000. I've got double planked hull on, so it's given me a little bit more. Um, but you can see just that brace strength alone with the whole health. You know, we're over... We're almost at 80,000 total health of this ship. It is literally, like I said, a floating fortress. So with the Ouroboros, we can see that it's got explosive flooding and fire. It is missing out on the piercing, so it's not really getting helped against... Uh, the the long gun builds, but it doesn't really matter because they've got to do so much damage to take us down fully. But we've got the Alma Gamate. Uh, I probably said that wrong. I probably butchered that. But on the perks, 50% of damage braced is converted to restoring whole health. This effect only occurs after bracing ends. So every time they proc that mass damage on you, where it does 7,000 damage to your, your mass because it it's torn them, you just let go of the brace for a second and 15% of that will immediately come back. Plus... It restores 100% severe damage every second. So if they ram you and they put flooding on you, you haven't got to worry about that. This is literally completely covered against all of that. Oops, I just took one of them off. So let, there's the Ouroboros back on it. Now, if we go down to the furniture, I have got the water tank. This is probably key for this. But yet again, I did say you could use the rigging station on this. Um, I'm not using the rigging station on this, but you could use it on it. And it works. All, it basically turns the snow into the bark because you know the bark heals itself up. But because it's got so much more health than the bark, um, it's only got like 30% difference when this is below 20% health. So it works just like a bark, even though it's a snow. Um, that's why I don't use the bark anymore. And I only use the snow if I want to have it like a bark build. But yeah, we've got the water tank which reduces crew stamina depletion by 50% while bracing and increases stamina recovery by 20%. So with that, you can literally hold brace indefinitely. Uh, port powder kegs, one increases port weapon damage by 10%. Um, I've got that, obviously, I was putting the darts on before, but just so I can do that little bit more damage because there's not really much more we could do. I mean, yeah, we could go and chuck now that I've put the Karens on the side and uh, the torpedoes, we could up the flood and damage, so increase the elemental damage of uh, our culverins. Or we could do it, obviously, of the torpedoes and completely remove these, which might be a better bet because these only do 10% extra damage. So if we went down and we went to... Where are the culverins? Culverin works. Where are you sitting? Mm -mm -mm. Mm, you are floating around here somewhere. There we go. Culverin. It increases damage multiplier of culverins by 90%. And then we could go and hit the torpedoes up here and go down here and put elemental damage of torpedo by 90%. So we're getting... 19% front and back and 19% left and right. And so it's better than the 10% on just left and right. Um, this is probably the ultimate build for PvP with a snow when uh, Season 2 drops. But it's not currently there yet. So guys, I think that is me going over my top ships. If you were looking for any builds for any other ships, let's just say if you wanted to change ship and you're looking for a build for a Bark, you're looking for a build for a Padel Khan, uh, you're looking for a build for anything then go over to the Discord, discord.gg, and in there you've got ship builds. And in the ship builds section, you can literally find loads of builds made by the community. And they're obviously the ones that are most liked, most used, you can use for yourself. So without further ado, like, follow, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.